All right. The seven hermetic principles. Everybody can see it? Yeah. Yep. All right. Awesome. Okay. All right. This is the seven hermetic principles. But before I get started, I want to spend three minutes on reasons why I've been doing my presentations. This marks one year that I've been actually been doing presentations for Cubs. So I'm going to spend three minutes on just getting that done, and then we'll get the seven hermetic principles. The gentleman on the left, his name is Mark Passio. He's a researcher and fellow de-occultist. And the gentleman on the right is T. Chains. That's how you say it, T. Chains. All right, so what Mark Passio had said was the world has already ha has enough leaders. We've got political leaders, religious leaders, pope, nuns, all that stuff are good. What the world really needs are wizards that care about humanity and who are willing to act upon that care. I say to Mr. Passio, here I am. And number two, two chains. Two chains actually had a question for me. And he said, do you want a lifestyle like mine? And without hesitation, I said, yes, I do want a lifestyle similar to yours. Hardly spin on it, but yes. And then he took off his $50,000 Ray-Ban, looked me dead in the eye, and he said, drop your nuts and speak your truth. And I say to you, my witches, thud, thud. <laughs> so what are the seven hermetic principles? I thought you never asked. See what I did there? Thought? Okay. The, first, th the next two frames are a summary of the principles, and then right after that, it's gonna be a big deep dive of information. So I'm just gonna give you a brief summary of them. All right, uh, starting with the first one, the principle of mentalism. The all is mine. The universe is mental. Number two, as above, so below. As below, so above. Number three, the principle of vibration. Nothing rests, everything moves, and everything vibrates. Four, the principle of polarity. Everything is dual, everything has poles, and everything has its pairs of opposites. Number five, the principle of rhythm. The pendulum swings manifest in everything. The measure of the swing to the right is the measure of the swing to the left and rhythm compensates. Number six, the principle of cause and effect. Everything has its cause and every effect has its. Number seven, the principle of gender. Gender is in everything. Everything has its masculine and feminine principles. Gender manifests on all planes. There is no escape. So. What, I'm trying, what the first three principles are, what Mr. Passio, whose work I'm going to lean on heavily here, is what he called immutable and unchangeable. And what he means by that, it's like gravity. These things are always happening all the time. You can't stop it from happening. All you can do is change the how. And what I mean by that is mind, correspondence, and vibration. Think about it like this. When you're reaching out to turn the dial on the radio because you want to hear a song, that reaching out, you, that's your thought. All right? Number two, when you find the song that you like because you want to feel that emotion from that song, whether it be high emotion or low, that's the correspondence. And that's what's going to give you the emotion that you want, which is actually going to lead to number three, which is vibration. Every atom of your body is always vibrating all the time. And with that thought and emotion, that causes a vibration. And all the universe wants to do is send a mirrored reflection of that vibration back to you. And it's happening 24 hours a day, seven days a week, nonstop. All you can do is change your thought process so that way you can change your vibration. You can't stop it from happening otherwise. And then second four are just things that 
you're going to learn how to notice within yourself and notice in the world and the universe around you. So that way you can learn how to work with the universe. It's always trying to work with you. And this is how you're going to do it. So ready for this? Your mind is locked. Don't worry, I have a key near the end. All is mine. The universe is mental. Thoughts lead to the manifestation of things and events. Let's say that one more time. Thoughts lead to the manifestation of things and events. Thoughts create our state of existence and the quality of our experience here on Earth. Therefore, be responsible for everything you create by being responsible for everything you think. And you can actually control it, what you're thinking. You have to because whatever you hold in your mind, you will tend to occur in your life. I had a friend of mine, childhood friend, lost contact with him for a little bit, found out that he had went to prison, became uh, pen pals with him, and in one of his letters, he said, I always knew this would happen to me. Well, what the hell? <laughs> you always knew it would happen. Stop thinking like that. The quality of your thoughts directly relate to your experience in life. You can change your story. You can actually think something else. If you continue to believe what you've always believed, you will continue to act the way you've always acted. And if you continue to act the way you've always acted, you will continue to get what you've always gotten. If you want different results in your life or your work, you will have to change your mind. Now, <clears throat> I know things are going to upset you in life. You give them the quick attention that it, that it needs, and then you have to move on. You have to learn how to control your thoughts. Now, everybody, please take a deep breath. And count the three. One, two, three. Do it one more time and close your eyes. One, two, three. Now think about the first car you ever owned. You can think about the steering wheel. I had been seats in a duster. AM, FM radio. All right, now take another deep breath and think about the time that you had the most fun at the playground. When you were a little kid, everybody went to the playground at least once and had fun. Running around, swing sets, jungle gym. Now bring your attention back to the room and take a deep breath. One, two, three. Now open your eyes. You just redirected your brain in three different directions. You can do this. So when you're getting upset in life, always remember that you can do this. You have to change your mind in different directions to get a positive outcome. Your, the quality of your life depends on that. So it's all directly related to the mind. That's the starting point. That's reaching out to the dial. It always does it. It's always going to do it. So it starts right there. The second principle, correspondence. That which is above is like that to which is below. That which is below is like that to which is above. The macrocosm, the very large, the totality, and the microcosm, the very small, the individual units which comp comp comprise the whole are reflections of each other. The universe is holographic and it's self-similar across all scales. And what I mean by that is you can see the root system below is similar, that's holographic-ish, to, to the branches and leaves above. They're not exactly the same, they're similar. But here's also what's going on in your life. Everything in the universe is just a reflection of what's going on in your head and in your heart. Suzette, the reason why you're in my life right now, because inside this energy suit that I'm wearing called Harley Angel, there is a little energy ball that 
is Suzette. That's how you appeared in my life somehow. Either you're here to teach me lessons or to guide me or to do something. You know, good karma, bad karma, lessons learned, who knows. But we're, you're in my life for a reason, and that's why. And Alba, inside the energy suit that you're wearing right now, there is a little energy ball that is called Harley Angel. And somehow that actually reflected back at you that lesson of Harley Angel or whoever I am to you, you know what I mean? So all I can, I can actually say the universe is a great big mirror, good night, but then the show will be over real soon, so let's not do that. But also, this happened a couple of months ago. I was at, at work and I met the angriest, most bitter old man you've ever seen in your whole life. He was so bitter, you can actually see it just coming out his ears and he's actually bending his aluminum cane. I did the best I could. I didn't go get, get upset. I dealt with him appropriately as best I could. And then when I got back in my truck and turned around the corner, instead of beating myself up or wondering why I have such a job or whatever, I used this correspondence principle to say, Harley, this man was a reflection of you somehow. So I had to go deep inside me and say, yes, there is a bit of me that might be bitter and angry. So I have to learn to accept that and learn how to, you know, actually learn how to love that, you know. So the universe, so you know, I said, I would say he was a lesson. Keep continuing the way you were thinking one way, and this is how you might end up. All right, so hopefully I've learned my lesson. So here is a picture of scales across the universe. The atom on the very left there, there's a central point and all spinny things around it. And in the middle, the solar system. And in the middle of that is the central point and all kinds of spinny things around that. And there's also little spinny things around the things that are spinning around the sun. And then on the right, all the way to the end, look, that's what they think the known universe looks like. And in the middle, there's a hot spot. And either everything's just blowing out of it or spinning around it. I don't know, they won't send me up in a, in a ship and I can't take a look. So I think they might be right on that. The, la the last of the immutable ones, the third. The third of the seven universal laws tells us that nothing rests. Everything moves. Everything vibrates. The third and last of the immutable universal laws tells us the whole universe is but vibration. Science has confirmed that everything in the universe, including you, E equals MC squared, is pure energy vibrating at different frequencies. Everything that we experience in our five physical senses is conveyed through vibration. The same applies to the mental realm. Your thoughts are vibrations. All your emotions are vibrations where unconditional love in the sense of a love for another is the highest and most subtle of, of emotions and vibration of hate is the most dense and most base. You can learn to control your vibrations at will. But it takes willpower. You have to know what you're doing. Because now you know the secret of the universe. Congratulations, go for it. <laughs> yeah. So this is a picture of, a, of an atom but it's actually vibrating. And they vibrate so fast, it's like a spinning wheel. You ever seen a car go by so fast, you see the spokes and it just looks like it's just one thing going by? You're doing this all the time, even when you go to sleep. You ever heard the term, don't go to bed angry? Because you're vibrating that. And for eight hours that you're sleeping, all you're doing is get, you're gonna get a return for it in a couple of weeks maybe a couple of days. So we're off to the, to the four things that you're supposed to notice. 
Everything is dual. Everything has poles. Everything has its pairs of opposites. Opposites are identical in nature, but different in degree. Extremes meet. All paradoxes may be reconciled. All right, say I got a magic wand. And on one side of the magic wand is the word hate. And on the other side of the magic word wand is the word love. Somewhere in the middle would be the words dislike and like, and probably indifferent right down the middle of that. At what point does like become dislike? At what point does love become hate? What point does warm water actually become cool or cold? It's all water. It's all the emotion. I think sometimes the reasons why there's couples that start off madly in love in about 10 years, they madly hate each other. It's because it's that same fluid that's going back and forth. And there's a lot of different reasons why that would happen. But here's what I did with that angry old man situation with me. Didn't want, I, I knew at this point what I was doing, vibrating, and I can't stop it. So I had to change my thoughts from being bitter and angry with the old man into becoming, you know, happy, smiley, heartily. So I had to come to the point that I, have, I can't, I had to come to acceptance. I can't change him. I can't shake him. And then from there, from acceptance is reason. Well, maybe there's reasons the way he is, but I don't have to accept those as part of reasons the way I am. So I have to move on. And I learned how to love the old man because pieces of that old man are actually pieces of my own heart or else the universe wouldn't have not shown them to me. So that brings me joy and peace and enlightenment. It's a long road to get there, but we can get there. Rhythm. Everything flows out and in. Everything has its tides. All things rise and fall. The pendulum swings and manifests in everything. The measure of the swing to the right is the measure of the swing to the left. Rhythm compensates. See, if I was to take it out on myself about that angry old man situation, I would have been pushing that pendulum further and further off to the right, further and further, just getting angrier and angrier, and I become just as bitter as he is, and that pendulum drops, and slowly throughout my lifetime, I would actually grow more and more bitter, and near the end of my life, I would be just as angry and full of hate, just like that old man. I did not want that to happen, so, but you also, there's also other different rhythms. I have a rhythm to my day. I wake up early in the morning before the sun comes up. I get to get to work, get all my stuff together. But I'm not in the fluid motion of my day until 9, 30, 10 o'clock. And then my day picks up. I can feel the rhythm kicking in. That's when my tide comes in. You know, and then I'm flowing with, the, with everything that's going on around me until about 3 or 4 o'clock. And that's when I tire out. I'm looking for the end of the tunnel right there. So that's when my tide goes out. And I'm sure everybody else has a rhythm to their day. And you also have a rhythm. You knew your parents' rhythm when you wanted to ask them for money. <laughs> you knew when it was the right time to ask and the wrong time to ask. That was their rhythm. And this is happening all around you with everything. Cause and effect. This is one of my favorites. Pay attention, please. Ready? Please pay attention to this one. This is where manifested realities have formed due to their underlying causes. The plane of effects constitutes that which has already occurred. You can't unpush the button and not see me. As such, no power to effect change lies here because that which has already occurred cannot unoccur. It has become that which is the truth. All the truth is, is everything that actually happened without people's opinion. 
human consciousness seems to be trapped upon the plane of effects, meaning that humanity has a whole, as a whole, remains ignorant of the underlying causes to which they themselves set into motion and which led to their self-inflicted suffering in their own lives. Amen. <laughs> You're doing it to yourselves because you had a bad thought and you kept that emotion for an extended period of time. And that vibration went out to the universe. Some people, I, I used, I, I admit it, I'm the worst one at it when, a long time ago. I actually had a very, very murderous tendencies in my head. I would never let it come out on the real world. But, you know, hateful things would happen in my head. But I did not realize at that moment that I was actually sending vibrations out just by those mere thoughts. Now I know. So now I have to make a conscious decision not to think that way. And actually have to think kind things of think think like the angry old man. Now I actually think kind of him because the universe showed him to me. Said these were lessons in our, in our lives. What we're doing right now really is this. Every cause has its effect, and every effect has its cause. Everything happens according to law. Chance is but a name for law, not recognize there are many planes of causation but nothing escapes the law so if if you miss something it doesn't matter it's still the law it doesn't matter if you didn't know the law of gravity existed you still fell off the cliff it's always going to happen so like i said the quality of your thoughts is the experience of your life it's kind of like this, karma. So since I'm going with the quality of thoughts, I decided not to use the fear-based karma anymore. This is what fear-based karma is. You reap what you sow. Karma is the consequences, both good and bad, that are brought to you based on your actions, good and bad, and you are judged by your actions. Okay? This is the new way I'm looking at it. Karma is a gift that brings you lessons for your soul's personal growth. And it will continue to bring you these lessons back around until you have learned them. That's the way it goes. You ever notice that sometimes you meet the same personality, just different faces all the time? The universe is telling you something there. All right, number seven, gender. Gender is in everything. Everything has its masculine and feminine principles. Gender manifests on all planes, not just the physical plane of male and female, but let's take an artist for an example. He has that thought that he can actually do something. I believe that's the feminine principle. The masculine principle is actually trying to go out and find, if he's a stone cutter, go out and find the stone that he wants to use. The feminine principle looks at that stone and says, I can carve it this way. The masculine principle says, I can chip it that way. All right? <clears throat> but it's not just that way. Mental gender is the state of coexistence between masculine and feminine aspects of the human mind. Our left brain hemisphere largely facilitates the masculine aspect of the mind. Our, our intellect logical, analytical, and linear thought crust. I start here, I end there. It takes A, B, and C to get it done. The right brain hemisphere largely facilitates the feminine aspect, intuition, creativity, compassionate, and holistic thought process. The whole world should learn how to live as one. <laughs> and we should. But, so, you got to get both of these principles working together. That's firing on all cylinders. But that's not it. We have the seven principles right here. But the best one is the one that nobody's ever, ever talked about before. 
and it's the eighth principle. And the eighth principle is the loss principle, the dynamic of care, capital C, capital A, capital R, capital E. You only care about what you think about. You only think about what you care about. What we care about on a day-to-day -day basis acts as a driving force of our thoughts and actions. Therefore, care can be seen as the ultimate generator. That's the heart energy that I talk about all the time, of the quality of our experience. The principle has been often been referred to as the generative principle. Where have we seen the big G word before? Generative principle. The, the word generative is derived from the Latin verb generare, which means to create. When all these are all lined up and care is applied, because you have to care about what you think about, and that's what generates all the stuff in your life, from the ant that you stepped on to the bird that flies over your head. And all of this culminates to what? The key. Remember, your mind was locked, and here is the key. Natural law is expressed through the seven basic underlying principles, plus the eighth principle, which binds all other seven together. These principles co constitute a master key through which universal wisdom, including the knowledge of the requirements to obtaining what we desire, is unveiled or de-occulted. It's no longer hidden from your view. You know what you're doing in your life now. <laughs> Good luck to you. Come on. So what is the law? Do what thou wilt to be the whole of the law. And love is the law. Love under will. And not your will, not my will, but the will of the all, or who, whatever matrix is running right here, whoever's in charge of it, once you learn how to become into that will, things will start happening. So what is love under the law? Love is the highest frequency you can vibrate in. It is the highest state of consciousness. In the pure frequency of love, there is gratitude. It starts with gratitude, creation, and happiness in oneness. Love is all, and all is you. And that, that is the seven hermetic principles. So how do we get back up online again? <laughs> Good. Did you catch it all? Yep. Welcome back. All right. Cool. All right. We're all back and unmuted. All right. Do, they, do we have any questions for all of that? Yeah, that's a lot right there. Beautiful presentation. That was awesome. Yeah. It was. It was pretty good. I always to make you proud of me, Alan. Matthew. Beautiful. Beautiful. It's actually pretty true there, also, because. Yeah. You have um, your, your energy is what you bring in, what you what you mm -hmm. search for. Yeah. So that's the whole so radio yeah. dial. That's the whole radio dial thing, and it starts right there in your head. As <laughs> mm -hmm. soon as you have a thought, and it's going to be either positive or negative. As soon as you realize that it's negative, you have to make the option to change it out. Yeah, and to that extent you have cases where people are just nasty and they yes. will go looking to pick a fight just so they can get that same energy. Yes, that they're looking for the return on the energy. And some people wonder why, uh, why am I in a fight all the time? Why am I in a fight every day? Well, you wake up looking for it sometimes. Mm -hmm. I, I notice people sometimes are, you know, they, that's what they do. They wake up and they look for things to make them angry. 
And I, I think sometimes they're doing it on consciousness or unconsciously okay, I'm back because that's what their body is vibrating to. And then you get used to that vibration. You know? Yeah. You, you get, get addicted to, to the vibration. Exactly. Yeah. You get addicted exactly. To that you get addicted to that stuff. You don't even realize you're doing it. Right. At some point, especially especially before you learn these principles, you, you don't know that you're doing it. And so your body shifts into that vibration. Just like um, uh, the trap music, that's a certain vibration. You get into the vibration of that trap music over and over again, then you start feeling that all the time. Or the same thing with, um, see, that's why I started listening to just, you know, classical guitar music and stuff like that. Any music, really. Yeah, anything that's upbeat, you know, I, I try to stay out of the negative zone now. I can't, you know, because I know that leads to different thoughts. You know what I mean? So, yep. you know, with practice, you have to do it over and over again, but you'll, you'll get it. It's, a, it's a very much a wash and repeat process. I have a slight surprise. Oh, the beard oh, is gone. Yeah, look at you. About time you showed oh, up. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he don't look the same, doesn't he? Much, much better. Much better. Very nice. Looks hey, I'm going to let it grow back out, though. No. No, no. No. <laughs> like no. Well, the only one that really matters there is Birch, so I don't hear her. <laughs> yeah. Harley. I'll just enjoy this. Yes. So, as I listen to all these principles, I'm really questioning why there are seven principles. They all seem to be saying the same thing. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so, um, and I hear what you're saying. They all kind of lead back to one another. That's why, that's why I try to break them up to at least two groups. The first one being the whole mental aspect of reaching out to the, to the uh, radio. And the, and the second group being the ones that you're supposed to notice. You're supposed to notice polarity in people. You know what I mean? You're supposed to see, see like um, somebody who's dark. They're supposed to, there should be at least one piece of light inside there somewhere. But look, that's going to get them out of that darkness. And somebody needs to just ask them that, you know. Are let's say the uh, principle of um, cause and effect. We set things into our, into motion with either our mind or mostly our actions. Through the principle of vibration, it is going to come back as a mirror effect. So yes, they all are connected in some way or another. You know, somebody a long time ago discovered these principles, and I just love repeating them, but. <clears throat> You are correct. They're, they they kind of overlap a lot, but I think there's a purpose behind that. Yeah. It can't be stated more than it can't be stated enough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I like doing these things because it doesn't seem to be. Um, I know it seems to be like the most basic things, but I, I compare it to like um, a professional football player. He learned a three-point stand when he was six years old when he was first learning how to play football. And then his high school coach also taught him how to do a three-point stand. Now he's playing professional football. He's on his third professional team. He gets a private he gets a private um, um, tutor to help or oh. trainer to help him out. And the first thing they're gonna go over is his three-point stand because he's changed over time. He's no longer that six-year-old kid anymore. So his stance has got to change. His viewpoint has got to change. Everything has got to change. That's the only thing left to do is change. So that's that's the point I think of all, all the uh, principles all together because like you're growing throughout time, so you have to come back around to it all the time. I do believe it's a, a very much a circular motion, just like Einstein said. Mm -hmm. mm. That's cool. And once you start learning how to apply these, because like I said. When I, when I had the, uh, that angry old man situation really happened, you know, and a few years ago, I would have took that truck around the corner, ripped the steering wheel out the column, called everybody up, called the big fuss, yelled at everybody, had everybody yell at me just because some old man was bitter about his old life. It has no effect on me. His life is his life and mine is mine. I just happened to cross his path. But then I realized 
because I crossed this path, the universe is trying to share, share something with me. I still get a little bitter. <laughs> you know, I get a little angry. And those are things I have to work on, you know. Because sometimes you get stuck in that frame, you know. You're, sometimes your head gets stuck in a little loop, little hamster that does the same thing over and over and over again. You gotta break it up every once in a while. So this time, instead of going around the corner and cursing myself out and cursing the world out, I, re I applied the principles, you know, of correspondence and then polarity and then so on. You know, <clears throat> it's, it's very enlightening sometimes. <laughs> Well, I think it's it's good to help you recenter yourself, especially if you get into a depressive state. It's it's kind yep. of like the path I, to I, positiveness. And, and, you know. I have to admit, I, I I got used to being melancholy when I was very young. When I got into um, some really um, somber type music and stuff, and it, it just kept with me for a long time. And I realized I gotta drop this, you know. I gotta stop listening to that type of music because it, it makes me vibe a certain way. So mm -hmm. I had I had to do a one eighty on a lot of that. I don't it, think people also, understand vibration enough, and there's all levels of vibration. Yes. And if 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 you attach yourself to a low vibration, mm -hmm. you're going to be down, you're going to be low, you're going to be depressed. You need yeah. to I, I find the that. higher okay. vibrations. Mm -hmm. Well, there's like two examples I got to say on that one. It's like, like I said, my friend of mine that I, that my childhood friend that went to prison. And he actually, like I said, he wrote in his letter, I always knew this would happen to me. And that's when I caught it. I was like, oh my God, he's creating his own reality. Self reality, self realization. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he, and he still, he's, I, I still see him every once in a while, talk to him every once in a while. And it, it, he's still the same way. I can't, and the thing is, that's where you, you can't shake somebody, you know, you're doing it, you're doing it, stop. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I wish I, wish I could, <laughs> you know, but then I'll be shaking a lot of people. I have a question. Yes. Is, what's a better way if you think you're in a loop, you know, like going over yeah. the same thing over and over again? What is so, so I had positive? Question. You have, you have to, you have to yeah, refocus. Yeah, time. you go positive, but then it goes back to the, it's, besides that, it's never. Wash and repeat. It's very much a wash and repeat process. Mm -hmm. It says right there in the back of the bottle, wash it and repeat. When mm -hmm. you see yourself going, you that direction you say to yourself you, you self-talk is yes. one way and you say slow your roll girl i you know why did i do this uh, again again stop again, it again. and then say, time to change that path you know but self talk uh there's good books about self-talk and how that focuses you into uh doing what's good for you so eventually, because I you know a voice inside of you that tells you shut up, enough, and like okay, okay, enough. Eventually, I won't have to say that no more. Well, <laughs> and it sometimes it's just it will, it, will come, it will come back, but eventually <laughs> it'll be easier for you to get out of it. It's, mm -hmm. it's never going to stop. You're going, you're going, because like because that, that, that's an embedded process. So you're good, you're good, it takes a long time to reprogram your brain. You can start so replacing those negative voices by making sure you are producing the active positive ones. So yes. when you do something positive, go ahead and say, good job, you did the thing. You know, yes. recognize the successes and then you'll get that positive voice instead of the negative voice saying, what are you going to do? You can't do that. No, you can do that and then you try it. And then if you do, you're great. Well, I, I mean, what if we grew up in a world that, that everybody's great at math? I, I mean, what if we grew up in a world that everybody's great at math and we said that? I think everybody would become great at math. But we keep telling ourselves that we're, we're not. You know, with practice, you can't be great at math. What about having um, like a list of um, affirmations that if you know that you're going to go negative on something, you can bring it up and 
yes. read it to most yourself. Definitely. Yes, most definitely. Because like I beat myself yeah. up a lot, or I used to beat myself up a lot. As soon as I start seeing that coming, I, I tell myself, this is not true. I'm a good person over and over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. you know, so I have, I, it is a very much a watch and repeat process. You have to do it over and over again. And for me, I start first thing I wake up in the morning. You know, I've actually got, I've actually done this a couple of times when I first wake up in the morning. I am the sun! Yes! <laughs> I can see you doing that, Harley. Yeah. Uh, so I rolled out of bed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. Well, and just Joanna, having the same few you. phrases you repeat at yourself over and over can make that simpler. You know, yeah. you, you know what situation you always find yourself in. Just mm -hmm. give yourself a couple of good little pep talk phrases that you can just yep. keep repeating at yourself out loud, silently, whatever. Depending on how I, many people I, around I went you. I to another customer's house a couple of days ago. And my first time meeting this customer was not a pleasant experience either. And the first thing I did when I came onto the street, I was like, oh my goodness, I'm on this person's street. And then I said, nope, I got this. Their life is their life. My life is my life. Whatever they're going to say. Here's what the Bible <laughs> says about it. So, <laughs> what, 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 they weren't even home. They weren't even home. I was like, yeah. And I did, I did my job and went on about my business, you know. So mm -hmm. maybe just even realizing that, that, you know, I was willing to accept that somebody's going to be, you know, bitter. The universe made them not whole. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. And, it's, and like I said, it, like, the whole watch and repeat part, I can't express that enough. Especially in the beginning. The first couple of weeks or the first month or so, it's going to be difficult. I know. <laughs> Trust me, I know. But it's so worth it. Once you start getting into that process, but also realize that you know there's going to be days where all that just falls to hell, and you, you come home and dragging your knuckles. But then you got to realize once you get back in the shower, clean yourself up. Tomorrow's another day. The sun's going to come up. Let's do it again. Start all over again. I have the sun. <laughs> so. it, also helps, but it also helps to change those things that if we're having negative thoughts about something, mm -hmm. perhaps. I think sometimes we focus on something just needs to go. You I know, sometimes we focus too long on things we can't change. Yeah. But, you know, so I think Good sometimes point. we focus on. There you go. Good. I see someone shaking their head. We focus too long on things we cannot change. You have to accept it, and then move no, on. No, I, I can't agree on that. Everything, no, no. Everything, everything, everything you, you focus on it for a minute, like you're supposed to, and then. Yeah. You, know, you get a flat tire. You get out the car, you fix the flat tire, you get back in the car, and you move on. You, you don't have to accept it as you can't change it. You just have to accept it that it is. It is. It is what it is. It is what it is. It is. It is. And, and, then you, and then you go on from there. You have to accept what is and then move on. Yeah, you just say, well, that car, I'm going to get rid of it. I'm going to, as soon as I can. But for now, I'm going to baby this thing. So it gets me where I need to go, which is, you know, to my next job or to my what third job or whatever. And, mm -hmm. and then, you know, it'll be better. There's always a positive answer to a negative thought. Yes, there is. It's always, a, you have to search into it. always, you have to dive like I did with the bitter old man. You have to dive into that. Dive. Sometimes you have to dive deep. Yeah, you have to dive but deep. But there is dive. always a positive to the negative. It might not come right. that minute. It might there's come balance. Minute. The universe is based on balance. So if there's negative, there's positive. Whatever the negative situation is. But there's a little nugget in that next look, negative situation that's going to turn it around, but you have to look, dig it. Look for it. it. Look for the positive. Yeah. Every negative has a positive. Every positive negative. has a fucking negative. <laughs> yep. Just saying. Yep. Watch your language, small ears. Just, <laughs> just grab, attach yourself to what works for you. Whether it be Whatever. negative or positive, for some people, have... negative works. Negative works. 
Uh, For most of us, we want positive. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I agree with you there, easier but I just have one question. Many cases, though. I agree with Panda. Many easier said than done, but yeah. well, back to what you guys Panda. said, Definitely. if you get a flat tire, mm -hmm. something went wrong in your life, you change yes. it. Yes, you change that tire, but then the you, best of your the ability. you get back in the car and drive away. <laughs> you know? Exactly. And then in time, you basically get better set I mean, a whole new set of four new tires eventually if you can afford it. Yeah, yeah, you know? And if you keeps up, you can get a better car. You just got to keep exactly. that positive thing flowing, you know? And you still and have to use up, the dust you know? yeah. car. Yeah. Because, Harley, that's the thing, though. <laughs> You're saying that you can't change, you, you can't change the universe. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. You can't change it, but maybe you, you, you can flip it to something that you like better. Yeah, that's or make it about the will. Remember at the end, I said you, you got to learn love under will. Right. It's will all about your time. acceptance. Yeah, so mm -hmm. well, it's you also how it, to communicate with the universe. Go out of your way and start learning how to communicate with the universe. Trust Absolutely. me, it will start communicating back. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you, know? you cannot control what the universe sends to you, but you control no. how you respond to the universe. If and if you have resiliency, resiliency has a different vibration than negativity as far as trying to change something that's not going to change. Absolutely. Like hitting your head against the wall. With resiliency, you vibrate at a different level than when you're just, you know, cursing Thank in you. and and not accomplishing anything just getting a big mm -hmm. medal or well yeah it, it's the difference between uh flowing with the ocean versus trying to to break down Swim the against uh, the, the yeah. against fight against the current the yeah. Tide. yeah you try to cross the riptide it's not going to happen you got to go parallel to that beach you know sometimes you just have to accept the negative you gotta do it to get yeah. on to the positive mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and trust me, it, it, the little hamster will fall off the wheel, but you got to get it back on again. It, uh, that's all there is to it. And, and sometimes you learn just from knowing that this is the time to stop and question. Mm -hmm. and there's a lot of breaking. There's a lot of Why am, am I in, going in circles? What What is going on right now? And so, and you think, oh, what am I, I, I wonder how the hell this is going to end up. Because <laughs> I don't freaking know right now. Mm -hmm. And just but, saying, I don't know. I mean, that's one of the things of the pendulum, too. The question. Yeah. Yes, exactly. It's yes, no, maybe, and uh -huh. I don't know. A lot of times, I find when I say, I don't know, tell yes. me the answer. Yes. And then you put it and then, uh, and then I get the aha moment. Tell me. Give me a sign. What the heck am I looking for? It's okay to acknowledge you don't know. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes when you love about the universe, it gives you the best how you answer feel. possible. It does. I mean, the one that you never even thought of. If, if you don't acknowledge what you don't know, you cannot accept what you can do. Let me change. Put you this uh, eventually uh, acquire. All right. I worked 14 years for a landscape company in Tampa, Florida. 14 years for one company. They always tease that little carrot of supervisor out in front of me. I even cut my hair, stood up straight, tucked in my shirt, all that good stuff for 14 years. Never got the supervisor's position. Finally said, I'm done. Eventually, I got to another company. They moved me down here to South Florida. Oh my goodness, I got to meet all you wonderful people. That would have never happened if I was stuck doing middle management of some landscape company. You know, I get to be with you guys. Isn't Aww. that the better situation? And we got to meet with you. <laughs> you, to meet you. Yeah, so okay. I think that's yep. a much better situation. You know? Working for me. I didn't even dream of it. Somebody else dreamed of it. So there you go. <laughs> I think I think it worked out for the best. And that's what you gotta keep saying to yourself. Things are gonna work out for the best. This when so life cool. throws you lemons, you got to make key lemon pie. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, I mean, to, give, to add to that story about um, with what you work with, when I was going to ITT Tech for um, schooling and it closed down on me, that's one hell of a story of making uh -huh. something out of nothing. Yeah. And I landed the job that I have because of my education. Yeah. 
so, so something you changed. Know, I never that. finished his degree. Yeah. I mean, I think a lot of people have the same experiences or some something similar where where they were going for something, it got it got caught out from underneath them, but they didn't give up, and then something else twice as good came along. And it was something they were meant to have even thought of, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's how it usually happens. You yeah. put your heart on something, you give your heart and soul into achieving it, something fucks up and smacks you in the brain with a two by four, <laughs> you collapse, <laughs> and then next thing you know, you're, the current's dragging you down the stream, you have no clue where the heck you're going to end up, but then you run into a bunch of wonderful people and you love them very much. So, <laughs> yeah, so, so I think the moral of the story of that one is just don't give up. You know, Never don't give up. give up. Never give up. Never give up. Never surrender. Yeah. Right. Life is good. It's Waiting good to be alive. That's awesome. Things get good. Things get bad. Then they get really bad. Then they get really good. It's mm -hmm. a life. If you well, wake up no and have breath, in life. you have oh, the possibility oh, to achieve. Mm -hmm. Eventually. Sometimes you might think something was an accident, but then it turns out to be something. <laughs> 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 I played Pink Floyd for my family college when I was a kid. <laughs> well, we are creatures that need that intensity and that fight of back and forth. We, we need the tension. The tension. Challenge. Challenge. We need There's challenge. Challenge. Get ready. Yeah. Oops, ready. Mm -hmm. I'm operating on just a few hours of sleep tonight, guys. If I start saying stupid shit, it's because my brain's like <laughs> dead still. Well, I'll let you know when you start hallucinating. That'd be great. Well, no, right I'm sorry about so. that. Hope you sleep well tonight. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'll sleep better when Cruiser is returned to me. <laughs> <laughs>